So what's up guys? So I want I've been meaning to actually do one of these videos for a while, but I just haven't found the time to get around to it. But I sometimes do surveys or I'll get an you know something from the American Civil Liberties Union in which I basically respond. Usually they're just asking my opinion about certain things or you know donations or whatever. Well, in the last couple months, I've done a couple of different surveys, and uh, one of them was on criminal justice reform. And I thought I'd just kind of run through it really briefly, and then the other one was on religious free, you know, the religious freedom in California and the United States. But starting on the criminal justice reform, one of the first thing they asked me was, America's criminal justice system is deeply flawed and pressing for fundamental reforms uh, or, or, uh, America's criminal justice system is deeply flawed and pressing for fundamental reforms should be a priority for civil liberties advocates I hit strongly agree because personally I, I very adamantly believe that there needs to be fundamental reforms in the United States when it comes down to criminal justice reform because with the excessive use of force and the police brutality that is being used against not only African Americans but any US citizen we could use the Occupy movement as, an, as another example serious reforms need to be made uh, in America today too many people go to prison for far too long for no good public safety reason I strongly agree I believe that you know there's a lot of issues especially regarding non-violent measures of why people are being put in prison for lengthy prison sentences and I think that if you've committed a violent crime or a sexually aggressive crime that you should be put in jail longer and if you've committed a you know no violent crime then your sentence should be less you know depending on the circumstances but your your it should be less you know like for instance, being thrown in jail for, you know, possessing marijuana should not be a lifelong imprisonment. Um, uh, personal issue concerns. Police immigra uh, immigration agents and the FBI using racially uh, profiling to target individuals for law enforcement attention. I am very concerned about that. Um, because, yeah, racial profiling is just wrong, no matter where you try to slice it at. States uh, contracting with private for-profit corporations to run their prisons. I'm very concerned about that because I don't personally believe that we should run any institution like a business or a corporation. So, yeah. <coughs> Mandatory sentencing laws that take the discretion out of a judge's hands and impose extreme penalties for nonviolent offenses. Again, I'm very concerned about that because I personally believe it should be in the hands of a judge or in the hands of some you know, of the people or in the hands of somebody that can best represent the people. Um, excessive and unaccountable use of force by local police. I don't think it's just local, I think it's for a lot of different police units, and yes, I'm very concerned about that. Mass incarceration that has swelled the size of America's prison population over the past four decades. I'm very concerned about that because a lot of the reasons people are in prison today are under a lot of really sinister or very, you know, lame circumstances. So, you know, I think we need to uh, kind of re-examine, you know, prison sentences and, and, you know, all kinds of different things. The federal government funneling billions of dollars into the acquisition of military equipment and the use of military tactics by law enforcement. I'm very concerned about that because I don't believe that police need military-grade equipment to deal with to deal with protesters or to deal with the American public. So, yeah. 
the use of extended solitary confinement on juveniles held in jails and prisons. I am somewhat concerned about that. Because, you know, I really don't see why people are, you know, so aggressive when it comes to dealing with t uh, misled youth is a term that I typically try to use because they, you know, they need to be educated. They need, you know, the resources to get out there, get their education, and be able to be a productive member of society when they're an adult. So, you know, the widespread use of sentences without parole for people convicted of nonviolent crimes. I'm very concerned about this because people, again, that aren't, unless you, unless you actually have committed a violent crime, I don't understand why you're getting a lifelong prison sentence. I don't understand why we're doing that in this country. I really don't. And all I can really think about is it's a, you know, goes back to that whole thing about the for-profit corporations and stuff like that and private contractors. That's all I can really think of the reason behind that. Local law enforcement using middle-of-the-night SWAT team raids in situations not involving hostages, barricades, or other active threats. I'm very concerned about this. I mean, there are circumstances where that can be useful, but I kind of view it kind of a dis you know, ironically as disturbing the peace, because unless you really have a, you know, legitimate reason for raiding a person's home in the middle of the night, then I really can't really follow. So, um, this next one's about path to reform. How effective do you think uh, each of the following steps would be in making America's criminal justice system more just and fair. Efforts to pass federal legislation to dramatically reduce mandatory mi minimum sentences for drug offenses. I think that'll be, s I actually put somewhat effective, although now I would probably say very effective, because I think that, you know, to dramatically reduce the mandatory minimum sentencing to drug offenders would greatly improve, you know, a lot of things across the board. Passage of state laws outlawing the use of private companies to run prison facilities. This would be very effective because, again, this would essentially take the decision making and uh, the, basically the essentially privatization, the for profit element, out of prison systems and put it back into the hands of, the, of where it really matters in the hands of the people. In the hands of people that, you know, want to rehabilitate you know, offenders and not make money off of it. Marijuana law reform ending criminal penalties for the possession of small amounts of marijuana. I think that would be very effective. I think to make it even more effective would just be to legalize it outright because, you know, marijuana is not a dangerous drug. And you can make the argument that it is but you're going to need sources to back it up. And I have sources to back up that it is not harmful. In fact, that it actually can be very helpful in a lot of situations. So, you know, now if this was talking about cocaine and other things, then I can understand your cynicism. But this is marijuana. So, and there's studies that have proven that marijuana actually is helping people in a lot of different areas. Efforts to end the transfer of military style equipment from federal agencies to local pr police. Again, that would be very effective because if we can actually eliminate the military grade hardware that's in the hands of law enforcement, I think that it would, you know, the, the society as a whole would breathe a little bit easier knowing that their government or their police wasn't basically trying to, you know, kill them with a bazooka. So, this has been part one of this video in which I talked about the criminal justice reform and my views on that. Part two will be on the religious freedom aspect of it. So, I'm Norcal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and I will see you for part two.